Power Pivot, Power Query, Power BI, Service versus Desktop. What do all these things mean? It can be very confusing. I'm going to demystify it. My name is David Benheim and I make lots of videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets, Sway, whatever stuff you use in the office, I'm making videos on that. So let's get going. I like to use the analogy of the Eiffel Tower here. And the reason is because it has three distinct segments. The legs all start from disconnected parts of the ground. And to me, that represents data sets that are currently being disconnected. So you might have an Excel file with data. You might have data from the web or from a database or even from a folder containing Excel files as well. And then as we go into the three levels of the power tower, we have power query at the bottom. And what that does is it first extracts data from these different sources. And then it enables you to reshape the data. So like changing columns, rows, arrangements, renaming, adding conditional columns, lots and lots of things like that. It's an ETL tool, extract, transform, load. Then you have power pivot, and that is sort of the middle layer. So that is in effect combining and bringing together, creating table joins between tables that are not currently joined together that might even come from different places. And then you can also create measures. So write custom calculations in order to compute things. And then finally on the top layer, you have ways you can build the visuals. The other thing about the power tower is that it's symmetrical. So half of it is Excel and Excel has both Power Query and Power Pivot built in and Power BI Desktop has both of them as subcomponents as well. The difference is the top layer. So that this third level here, because Excel uses pivot tables, but Power BI uses visuals that interact with each other. And both of them can have charts and slices as well. And next you have Power BI Service. So that's kind of the top tier there. And if we go further in that, you can publish reports from here, either internally or externally. So here I am in Power BI Online, and this is really just a way to view data in modern visualizations and also interact with it. So I can hover over multiple one of these points and get breakdowns at each specific point. Uh, I can also change filters and I can choose basically any one of these charts and that will filter the data as needed. So there's lots of different ways that you can work with this data here. You can also sort of navigate through different tables. You can have data on a map with filters and lots and lots of other things. From here, you can then choose to share it. If you have a Power BI Pro or a premium account, you can share it with other people. They can share it with you. If you don't have one of those, then you can't view what other people share with you. Or you can also click here and go to embed and you can embed internally or publish to the web. And that is how you get data that is external. Less common, but this is an example on my website. So this is COVID-19 data. It's updated every day. And this is just as interactive as the one that I just showed you. So for example, I could filter for only certain parts of Europe or Asia. And then from here, I can hover over every point and see the breakdown there. And this is Power BI's output. Essentially, it's very, very clickable, interactive, beautiful, uh, ways that you can analyze your data. You can also embed it into this application called Sway. It's a forgotten Microsoft app. I love this. Look how interactive this is. It's mobile optimized, dark themed. You get these images that you can do this and this to. I have another video about Sway that I'll link to here. And I wanted to show you this. You can embed a Power BI dashboard directly into here using embed code. And it's clickable just the same as what I just showed you earlier. All right, so that was the fourth step, which is publish reports. Let's go into uh, the beginning. So the first issue, your data is typically outside of your organization. And that might be in separate pieces of the puzzle. 
that can themselves be different Excel files. So you might want to have different Excel files that you put into a folder and then that folder brings the data into Excel or Power BI. So here I'm in Excel on the data tab, everything here up till this section, this is all Power Query. Power Query is the biggest thing to have happened to Excel in 20 years. So the data didn't start there. Actually, the data starts in this folder. So over here, I have Austria and France data and this light bulb PNG. And over here, I have Austria and France. And if I open up the way that the data looks, it looks like this. So I've got loads of merged cells, hidden rows, columns, subtotals I want to get rid of, other annoyances like Excel does not know that these two rows both refer to green apples. Now, what I want to do is I want to reshape the data so that it starts off like this and ends up looking like this, which is a lot more understandable. And I can use this in pivot tables and further analysis. So in the get data tab, I can go to get data from another Excel workbook, from PDF, all these sort of things from a folder. That's the demo I'm going to do with you today. But I can also go from a database, etc., etc. So I'm going to launch the Power Query Editor. And what that does is it launches a new window that's not even Excel anymore. It's got four different tabs, the transform, add column, home and view tab with completely different options to anything that I've really seen before. And you can't edit the data here. You can only reshape it and do these steps to get through that. So if I go to the first step of how it started, this is essentially the same as my folder. So if I show you this folder, I have Austria, France, and the light bulb data. Generally, you would expect I don't need the light bulb. So I do a few transformation steps to first clean out what this is. So I would say I don't want to see that. That's a filter there. And then eventually do a few more steps and expand first from file into sheets and then from sheets into uh, actual data. And after this, it then goes into another one. So I'm going to demo one with you. I'm actually going to right click and reference this just to show you a quick example of some things you can do. So right from here, you can click on use first row as headers. And I can also say that I want this to go down. So not very easy in Excel native, but in Power Query, you just click on here, go to transform, fill down. Another really good one is on pivot. That's impossible in Excel, but so, so nice. We can then, if we want to reduce the data by choosing the columns and only choosing a few ones that we like, maybe like that. And then we don't need all of this data, so I can click here and remove empty. The filters are kind of similar to Excel, but that's sort of how it would look. And eventually this loads into my worksheet and it looks something like this. But the cool thing about Power Query is that you create the data steps once and they can be reused in future. So here I have a backup file of UK data. If I drag that in here and I go in here and you can see my dashboard is now just showing me uh, pivot tables and slices and charts based on Austria and France data. If I just go to data and click refresh all, and there you can see UK, that's it. It's now loaded these new rows, the UK rows, and it's gone into my dashboard there. So these are pivot tables, these are pivot charts, and these are slices that can be linked to multiple pivot tables and multiple pivot charts at the same time. So to get to them, click on a pivot table, go to analyze and choose to insert a chart slicer or a timeline. I have another video on dashboards where I go through that, but I'm going to speed up here. So reviewing where we are, I went over Power Query and now let's go into the next one. So the other issue number two is that no join tends to exist between data sets. My actuals and my targets, this is very, very typical of, and I want to create table relationships, even though they might come from different sources. The other part of Power Pivot is to create custom calculations. So in Excel pivot tables, you can get a count of, for example, number of items, which would be one, two, three, four here, number of products. 
So in products, here I have one, two, three, because tablets is twice. And actually it's very difficult to have an Excel formula that does this. It's actually impossible without Power Pivot. Number of sales, so, or total sales, so 23. So I want this to say, for example, tablet, comma, laptop. And, you know, to just concatenate with commas as we keep going, if he has more products, etc. So those are two things that Power Pivot does. Uh, this is the Power BI desktop file. You can get it for free on the Microsoft Store or download it. If I go into transform here, this is where you get Power Query. Notice it's all the same settings that I briefly showed you earlier. After that, you get into a table relationship phase. And here, you can just sort of create a relationship between a couple of tables like this. So you can drag and drop. This is the view of the relationships. And you can go to manage relationships and create it there, or you can drag and drop. So showing you the same thing in Excel. Over here, in the data tab, you have these two. So create relationships and this is the power pivot window so that opens up yet another new screen that's not excel anymore uh, i don't tend to use this one as much though even though i do use power pivot because i do it from the regular grid but the diagram view is quite useful here so this is quite similar to what we have it does one to many relationships for the data people out there and i can say that i want to compare it to the date table so i'm going to create a relationship between the sale date and the dates in the calendar table. And that essentially means I can use them in pivot tables there. So if you go to in Excel, you choose insert pivot table and you click here, use this workbooks data model, you get this. So this is showing us all the tables that we have that we can connect to. And I can do what I intended. So I can go to the country table, choose country, choose targets. And then I can also go to the combined Excel files and choose the total sales, total amount there. And then if I wanted to, I could do a formula that takes one away from the other. By the way, if you're not seeing this, then you might need to enable it by going to file and then options and then add-ins. And then you can see that power pivot is a com add-in, so choose com add-ins go and then tick on power pivot for excel there to make it show up so back in power bi that's the table relationships now creating measures so here i have data on casualties by selfie this is real data this symbol this means it's a custom measure that's been built so deaths is just a sum of the deaths something you could do with pivot tables automatically but what is a little bit more specific is india deaths so this is number of deaths as a percentage of India only. So if I add a new sheet here, I can drag in India deaths and I can say that I want that broken down by type. And then I can see it like that as I go along. Now uh, there's a coding language called DAX. It's short for data analysis expressions that you need in order to write these functions, but it is a really cool way to analyze data using that instance. So uh, as you can see, I'm into step three now and I've got my different visuals here. But maybe even I want to use country in a map using the map visual and I can see there all the places where people died, but maybe I want to look at the total deaths as the size of the bubble. There's India, much, much bigger. <laughs> and you can link these report page tooltips, which again, I show how to do this in another video. And once you're here, you can click the publish button and that will take you from step three, which is Power BI desktop, into step four, which is Power BI online. So if you like this video, then please consider clicking on the subscribe button because I have loads more videos on how things work along across my channel. And I have specific ways to do things on both Excel and Power BI and specifically Power Query, Power Pivot. 